Hi, everyone, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 3 of The Leo's Den. My name's Nia Tapper, and my fun fact is that I have a YouTube channel where I do hot seat interviews, where I do ad workouts, and also other funny little things. Hi, everyone. My name is Ilona Mar. Uh, people call me Lo. And my fun fact is I just hit 100,000 followers on Instagram last night. Woo-hoo! Woo! <laughs> big stuff, big stuff. Um, all right, so we're Leos. We got to start with our horoscope. So today, unexpected financial benefits could leave you speechless today. It could be an unanticipated bonus, gift, or even a small lottery win. This is the day to seek the improbable. If you have a project you wanted to try but have hesitated because it's too risky, start it now. Success and good fortune should follow anything begun or completed now. You copy that right off the internet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Should follow anything begun or... Okay, now I hear it. It's like when you say it out loud, sometimes it doesn't make sense. Uh, just, to, just to preface this, I am at a tour right now in Colorado. So if you hear weird sounds, I just I got called up to play 15s um, last minute. So I'm here and it's been a whirlwind of a time. So if you hear people talking, it's just my teammates. I'm, I can't find a place to do this podcast. So we'll work with it. Yes. So let's get into this horoscope. I love horoscopes about financial benefits because who doesn't want to be financially benefited, especially on a (laughs) busy for you or chill Wednesday um, for each other? Um, Is there anything not that you have to say, but does this touch you in any way where it's like, oh, okay, I was thinking about doing this or trying this and this is a sign of like, okay, let me go and get this popping because of this horoscope? Well, I think it kind of works out for this episode too with like the social media because you and I definitely both use social media for uh, uh, maybe un- bonuses and I guess financial benefits. So it yeah. kind of works out because that right now has become a key part of both you and I's um, finances. Yeah, I agree. I think I might go play the lottery today. I'm not a big gambler. Are you? No, I never, never. Yeah, same. I I have no luck. It's not worth risking the money. Even if I possibly won a million dollars, it's not worth losing $10. (laughs) That logic is not sound. (laughs) I mean, it's true, though. That's that's what they risk. You go buy. They risk more than $10. They they put in. It's, I just can't gamble because I literally never win. And I just don't see the thrill of it, I guess. But I feel like the lottery tickets are like, what, $3? Something like that. With the possibility to win billions of dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm you, like, yeah, yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> not worth it. Okay, so the topic for today, as said earlier, is social media. And I think one of the first things that we should probably get into with our Cubs is why did we start, you know, focusing on our social media and when did we start? So Lo, how did that journey start for you and why? I mean, I didn't start really Instagram until maybe college. And then I didn't, um, I still remember I was like 13 when I got to get on Facebook. It was like a big thing when I turned 13, my mom helped me make a Facebook account. And then Instagram was like my freshman year of college. So I uh, always just used it fun. I never really expected anything of it. And then it wasn't until I joined the national team where I was like, oh, wait, this can be used as a tool mm-hmm. to like, I guess it wasn't really to make money because I had such a small following, but used as a tool to get myself out there to hopefully one day, like, you know, get more followers, get more notoriety, make money in other ways. When did you start? Um... I've been on social media, you know, for a long time, but I want to say like my second season on the team, I became good friends with Carlin Isles and I was able to watch him take advantage of his social media in a financially beneficial way in terms of getting sponsorships and things like that. And I didn't see really anybody else um, specifically on the woman's side doing that, benefiting from social media, having a second income from social media. So I really picked his brain because I wanted to make as much money as I possibly could. And you make money in rugby, but it's not this huge amount that people think you do. So and I didn't want to have to do serving or I didn't want to have to work an like a part-time job at Dick Sporting Good if I could just make money off of social media since that's what I was doing anyway. So picking his brain and realizing that it was possible as long as you put in certain certain steps and work, 
that was my um, green light to start really honing down on social media and what it could do for me and the rugby team. And I think one thing about you too is like, yeah, we get paid through the rugby team. You know, we get paid monthly, but Nia is the type of person who she wants to buy things that give her joy and pleasure. And she wants to go out to eat. She wants to, you know, do things that make her happy. So that does mean like you have to kind of subsidize your income in a way so that she can live the life that she wants. And I think that's something that I'm trying to do now too, is like get more money so that I can like pay for things that I really enjoy and that I really want. Mm -hmm. And it's not only like that, it's also like preparing ourselves for the future so that we can retire early so that we can um, have a savings account so that if something happens, it's not a big financial burden to us. I think that's one of the main things I think about is like, I want to be able to help my family travel and see the world too. I want to be able to, you know, give my family great Christmas gifts and, you know, make them feel appreciated. And I feel like money has a big, plays a big part in being able to do all those things. And, you know, money isn't just going to be given to you. So the question comes down to how are you going to get it? Now, do you have like help or an agent for your social media or is it kind of just you who does it? Mm -hmm. So for a long time, I just tried to do it by myself, but I am not somebody who will force myself to struggle if I don't have to. So another thing I learned from Carlin is he had an agent. So my first thing was like, okay, I need to get an agent. So that was the first thing that I kind of looked for was somebody to help me get into the areas of business that I didn't know about or wasn't familiar with. So that was my first step. And I found an agent who is now like my mentor, great friend, Phaedra Knight. And she had an agency and we had worked with a couple of the guys, I think. So um, had experience and also was working with somebody who was big in the business world who had experience as well. So I thought, you know, this is perfect. And that's kind of how um, my journey of finding help and how to navigate social media in a financially beneficial way started. What about you? Do you have an agent? I really, I, I do in a way, but I don't have a social, somebody who's focused on social media. So I do all of my social media on my own. I do all of my TikToks. I do all of my like content creation. If I'm doing something for a brand, I do it literally on my own. And I, I am realizing like, it is so much work. Yeah. Like, there's all these creative briefs, there's contracts, there's all these little things they want. There's like, you have to send an invoice and all these things. So currently I literally do it all on my own and it is just an insane amount of work. Mm -hmm. And over time, like I started my social media journey four years ago, four or five years ago. So over time, I've slowly added people to my team to make the process easier. Um, I've changed agencies. I've, I have like a lawyer slash manager. I have a social media content lady who, um, helps me with my hashtags and what content I should put out and helps me take photos. So slowly as I've gone on this journey, I've added people to the team to make the process more easier to bring in people who know more about it than I do. Yeah. And that's the thing I think I need to start doing just cause like I get um, a lot of offers through emails and just constantly people are emailing you like, Oh, do you want to do this? And then we'll give you this. And it's like, there's so many to sort through so many, like, okay, do I want to go with this brand? Do I want to do that? Like I recently did something for like Buffalo wild wings and that's just been like so much work. So it's like yeah. having somebody who knows it and understands it could be so important. I think that's something that I need to like invest in mm-hmm. um, for sure now. Yeah. And what is that? As you're talking about like the emails that come in and the possible work for you to gain money off that, what has that content creation been like for you, especially for you saying like you've been doing it all by yourself? What is that process like? Yeah, so it's just a lot of like me back and forth with the companies and I'm like, they'll be like, hey, would you like to do this with us? I'm like, hey, yes, here are my rates for this. And they'll Mm -hmm. either give like yes or no and we'll kind of go over like debating what the rates are good or not. And then if I agree to it, they'll send over a contract. I'll uh, sign the, I'll have the contract, my lawyer look over the contract and then I'll sign it. And then we have to go through a creative brief, which is what they're looking for. Yeah. A lot of people are looking for a TikTok, an Instagram and Instagram stories. And I'll give them pricing for each of those. And then, um, 
then it's just like finally like figuring out what I want to do. Cause a lot of these t- companies are like, Oh, we want to see your personality in these TikToks, And we want, we want to be your funny self. And it's like, it's really awkward for me to bring in my personality when I'm promoting something. Cause it just doesn't feel as organic as yeah. natural. Mm-hmm. So that's always hard for me. Um, and then it just means I have to take time out of my you know day. And it's literally like a job. It's like, okay, on Wednesday at, at, from 10 to 12, I need to be shooting for, Buffalo Wild Wings or Hummus Harvest and then you know I send the videos over for review if they're not reviewed I have to do it again if they don't like them I'll do it again and then it's like a whole process of getting paid which is like that's what takes time Mm -hmm. that's interesting that you say like if they don't like it you have to do it again because I haven't experienced that yet is how many times has that happened so it's all very specific right so like recently I did a campaign for Buffalo Wild Wings and they want like a specific thing to say like oh we want you to go with our tagline is the greatest of all times you have the greatest of all times at Buffalo Wild Wings so I created a video but they thought it was too sentimental and they wanted to be more of my personality so I'm like okay well so I had to literally go to Buffalo Wild Wings they gave me a gift card I had to go Buffalo Wild Wings I got all this food again and I had to make another video um Um, wow okay yeah yeah. So, but it's like the payoff for what they're going to pay me for. It's like, okay, I'll, yeah. I'll do it for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like, I, I did a campaign. I'm doing a campaign with Moderna for getting people vaccinated. And that's like, you know, a lot of legal, like I have to be careful what I say. I can't say right. certain words because it could like legally be trouble. So you have to send it through and there. Maybe you're not in the right gear or whatnot. So it's like all little minute things that they'll check over. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. For me, the process is very similar. Um, a lot of my um, requests come through my email, but a lot of them also go through my agency as well. So I kind of have two flows of requests coming through. I like them coming to me personally because I just like to know like what's going on. I like to know all the information about everything, but it's also good to have it come through other people who are reaching out to people that I may not know. So kind of how I've been doing it is really just focusing on building my social media profiles to be more attractive to products. So that involves like setting up photo shoots once a month, creating content that was requested with my social media lady and and her setting up how it should look and um, how we should best sell the item that um, is being requested of me to promote. I would agree like it is hard to get into that mode of like, I was just, you know, training and now I have to go and um, act all happy and giddy for this product. So it is like switching on and off, but I think a lot of it involves time management, scheduling, um, clear communication with whoever you're working with, especially lawyers. I I know that can be tough sometimes dealing with reading contracts and stuff like that. But yeah, a lot of it is having very good organizational skills so that you don't drive yourself crazy and just get sick of doing it. Yeah. And I think that's my problem too, is like, it's just so much like you go training and then you got to do this and there's all sorts of little things. And, um, that's like the finding the time. Cause it, it's like, it seems like it's nothing. It seems like just an Instagram post, but in reality, it's like a lot to get just one Instagram post out there Yeah, and it has to be scheduled. It has to be planned. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, and you, I, what I do like about you is that you're so, you do the photo shoots, which I think is so important mm-hmm. because, um, it like great, just creates great content. And so you can consistently put things out. Yeah. So like, you know, twice, two, two times, three times a week, whatever you do, like you always have quality photos to put out. Yeah. Trying to get it in bulk in one day so that I don't have to worry about it for the rest of the month type of thing. That's like my way of not going insane. And because I'm too busy to enjoy life at times, you know? Yeah, so. for sure. Yeah. What has been, this is probably a great question that people want to hear, but what has been the best event or promo that you've done so far? Um, I think what was like, I got a TikTok offer to just like watch a movie and then react to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I got like $6,000. I was like, sweet. <laughs> uh, they sent this through. I was like, I will watch any movie you send me for that amount of money. So that's cool. And it was like, 
but that's like a process. Like it was like going back and forth and this is the movie you need to sign this, that you, you need to sign an NDA and whatnot. So that was really cool. But it like was tough because I've watched this movie and I have to like film myself. And that was one of those two where I said it over and they're like, Oh, but you said this wrong word. So actually you have to do that part over again. And I was like, mm-hmm. brick. Yeah. So that was probably the best one. But right now I actually really liked working with Moderna and working for the vaccine because that's been something that I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. And I like getting the word out there. And I, and like, I have tried to stay away from maybe not really, I don't think the vaccine's political. I think it's just science in my opinion, but like I have tried to stay away from politics and really things that are very skewed, you know, like right and left, but I am excited to do something that actually shares what I believe in. Mm -hmm. That's so funny that you say that that was like a plan promo the movie thing because when I was watching those TikToks I just thought it was a random like relaxing day for you where you were watching a movie and just reacting and and you know just being authentic so well I slayed that then I absolutely <laughs> slayed that I had no clue because <laughs> it did not feel that way when I was doing it <laughs> what about you what's what's your best event or promo um, I think I would say the best event or promo I've done was the Project Runway event in New York Oh my gosh, yes, that was so cool. Yeah, I I had to beg, 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 beg our staff to let me go to that because we were getting ready to go to Pan Ams in Peru. And I think I came a, a day or two late, but I, I knew like that was one of those once in a lifetime opportunities. I don't know how they found me. I don't know why they thought like Nia Tapper from rugby, but I didn't ask any questions. I was like, I'm definitely going to do this. And I got to meet some like real celebrities, which was crazy to be around. And I got to be on a set and see like how that works and operates and also got a lot of exposure from from it, not just for myself, but also for rugby in general, because it was a Olympic themed episode. So that was probably one of my favorite promos and events so far. Which I think is something that we're going to have to look at more because I think those are just such great opportunities, not mm-hmm. only for us, but for the team in general. And so it's it's such a weird thing because like we have such major times off. We have big times off, but then during the season, it's very hard to get time off. Yeah. But those sort of events can be so helpful. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like, yeah, finding the balance and like, as rugby progresses, this might be the way we have to move is like these people, we need these people to do these events and to do project runway to get our name and our team out there. Yeah. And I, I think that's something that I've been thinking about a lot too, because especially like after the Olympics, I had so many things that I wanted to do. And it's like, it was great that it fit into the time that we had off, but then it started making me think like, what if these things came up during the times where we had training sessions or we had tournaments and things like that like how do you choose and do you even have the option of choice like we have to ask permission to do a lot of these things because some of these things do require us to miss practice or possibly miss a tournament so you kind of have to choose like without the mentality it's it's not the mentality of oh I care about myself more than the team it's like there's so many benefits from doing it not only for ourselves but for rugby and for women's rugby and for usa women's rugby and sevens and 15s and all that like those businesses want to know how to make money they know that us athletes are the money makers and now they're seeing that we're not only the money makers on the field but we're also the money makers off the field and that's what i think they haven't taken full advantage of yet is us being able to make money and get exposure for them off the field and i think again like you said that's something that they're going to have to start really thinking about and finding out how to incorporate into um, their operation. Yeah, for sure. Now, do you have like a company you really want to work with? For me, for a very, very long time, it has been Nike. Like, I just, I feel like they are always on top of everything before it blows up. I love their clothing, their shoes, their accessories, I mean, I've been wanting to work with them for a very long time. I remember like a couple of years ago trying to start this stupid ass campaign of like, why is it that keep working with me? And, you know, I definitely got a good amount of free product from them, which is amazing. And for me, that's that's a start, you know, like I that's my foot in the door. And I'm sure I'm going to have to blow up a lot more to really get into their vision. But if that's what I got to do, you know, that's what I'm going to do because that's my dream company. What about you? 
Hey, always, I get asked this all the time and I never know. I literally just want like whatever company is going to pay me the most. <laughs> I, I don't really have like a specific brand, like whether it's Nike, Adidas, like whatever. I just, I would love to be the face of a company. I think I would love to be a face of a sports brand company for sure. Like Lululemon, if, though Abby would kill me, Athlet or something <laughs> like that, because they're these sports brands yet they use sometimes use just regular models it's like yeah we'll use us we're athletes we're beautiful athletes let us model for you yeah and i think that's like one of the things is like they're business people so in their mind they're like let me just pay whoever's gonna require the least amount of money because now we're smart enough to know like what we deserve and we'll fight for that to the death and if you don't pay that like it's like okay whatever we'll go find somebody new and that's exactly what they probably go and do now you have like had a did you have a strategy or something like that going into the olympics for social media um i did a photo shoot before just to have content i knew i would get a lot of content there just with like some of the popular places there to take pictures um so honestly, I kind of had the same strategy as I had before of just like making sure I post consistently. Um, it didn't go as planned as much as I wanted it to in terms of being able to post on my story a lot, just because we were so busy all the time. And I I felt kind of overwhelmed with our schedule and didn't even feel like bothering with it and knew like eyes would be on us regardless just because we were at the Olympics. So I just kind of vetted on that. But honestly, I just wanted my reputation and me being an Olympian rugby player to bring in whatever it brought in authentically just from playing games and getting eyes on us from that. And obviously we got the additional benefit from being able to do TikToks with you. So like, I kind of was like, whatever I get from here authentically on a day-to-day basis, that's kind of what I'm going to roll with. Cause it trying to do it the first day, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm already sick and tired of it. What about you? I, d- I don't think I had a strategy so much as I was like, I, we, I knew like you, that this was a very key time to get mm-hmm. followers, to get views and whatnot. So I was really, I'm committed to that. And first, when we were told about our social media policies, where we were told we wouldn't be able to post at all. Mm -hmm. Um, So I thought that I was going to have to create all this content beforehand and like wouldn't be able to post anything and just be silent. And then once we got to the village, we were told, oh, you can create TikToks. You can do anything. You can do Instagram posts. So I was like, okay, well, this is awesome. So I just started to put out TikToks. It was just like kind of for fun. Mm -hmm. No plan in it. Just to post as many as I could because it's like – I, I had already seen that TikToks can filter over to Instagram. Um, and so really just wanted to keep posting even the littlest things. And I, I realized, oh, people like just to see, I can just be talking about the camera to the camera about anything and they like it. They just like the authenticity. So I just started to like post whenever I could just the littlest things. And I think that was what people wanted to see. Yeah. So one thing that we touched on a little bit was the compensation aspect of social media, not only the money that we can receive, but also the money that we have to put down in order to get the resources that we need to have to be able to put out the amazing content that we do. So one of the things I wanted to talk about was like, what do we have to invest in in order to financially benefit from social media because I think that's one of the things a lot of people aren't aware of is they think oh these people are making all of this money off social media which is very true but they're also investing not only time but money into that process is there anything that you have to pay in order to play currently no I don't have to pay anything to play Mm-hmm. Um, I also currently don't pay anyone for my social media, which mm-hmm. I think is something, as I said, that I want to invest in. So I think yeah. it's just it, the return of investment on that can be so great. Um, but we used to, I think, which is why I was, you know, we used to go to tournaments and we'd get money for winning tournaments and whatnot, but now we don't have that extra income. So it has been key to use social media as a, another way to make small amounts of money each month mm-hmm. um, just to have that and you were saying you have a lawyer. How do you how do you have a lawyer? Because, you know, like 
from because you have to pay lawyers, right? Yeah, most people. So, yeah, yeah. So like, what you would do is like through a deal, you would. It's lawyers like my lawyer is my agent, kind of. So right. through the contract, um, your lawyer, your agent would get a certain percentage of what that was. So mm-hmm. if I have a deal for three thousand, he gets. I think it's 12% of that. Mm-hmm. So that's how he pays. I don't pay him monthly. I pay him for what deals I I get. Mm-hmm. And my situations are similar in some ways. Um, with my lawyer slash manager, it's kind of that situation of when we go over my contracts and she brings in um, potential sponsorships and partners, um, she gets a percentage of whatever I will make. And also for my agency that I'm with, with them, it's a little different to where they do a lot in terms of creating my website, bringing in products, getting me free products, getting me partnerships and things like that, looking over my contracts, um, helping with any type of social media um, resources that I need. So with them, I pay them monthly, but I also, if they bring in a, a contract, they also get a percentage of that. And then also for my social media um, content manager, I pay her monthly as well. So for me, I, over time, I've definitely had to pay to play, but it's been very beneficial for me and has saved me a lot of time to be able to focus on other things that could possibly bring me in money. So it is an investment. And just as much as we invest our time, like you got to pay to, you know, a lot of times get to where you want to go. Cause even if you just blow up organically, like Carla Niles did, like you did, like eventually it gets overwhelming to where you do need that help. And, um, A lot of the times you can get lucky and have like close friends who do that stuff for you, but eventually you will have to invest in something like that if you are looking to really benefit off of social media. And so do you have like a way that you create your pricing for companies when they come to you? Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, it was like, whatever you give me, like, I'll take that. Um, It was very like just being grateful for what I could get. But as time went on and I started realizing the benefit I bring to companies and that I wasn't receiving the same in return in terms of financially, um, I worked with my lawyer slash manager to create a pricing chart. Um, And a lot I think the first thing I did was like go on Google and look at the social media calculator. And it's like, how many followers do you have? Okay, this is how much you you should be making off a post. Um, And then from there, I graduated to people offering me more more than I even thought to ask for and then basing it off of that saying, well, you know, I made, I made this much off of this. So this is what you should pay me or more. And I've also been on a couple of calls and conversations about social media and how to capitalize off of it. And one of the things they talked about is never telling a business or a potential partner, no, no matter what, Um, they offer you, you should just always say, you know, do you have a budget? This is my pricing. Like if you can't afford it, maybe we can work uh, again another time when you can, but you should never tell them no, because you never know when you'll need that opportunity, whether you are ready to accept the lower price or not. So I think for me, I just worked with my lawyer and said, okay, this is how much I want to make off posts because this is how many followers I have. This is how much I want to make off events because this is what I was offered before. This is how much I want to make off commercials and things like that. So kind of learning as I go, because we, because I didn't really have anybody to go and say, Hey, what do you make? Cause they either weren't benefiting off social media, weren't tapping into that Um, area of work or they didn't want to tell you their prices and I'm like I don't know it's not why is it a secret you know but it was what it was so I had to kind of learn off experience what about you um I think very much so the same and I think you know interesting is like I think we downgrade our words a lot like oh I only have you know this 10k followers I I, maybe I shouldn't get this but it's like we downgrade how um effective and how beneficial we can be to companies and so i did think it is key to like not sell yourself short for what you can do yeah um and i think i even do that sometimes too it's like 
like, oh, I, even at, even at 100k, I'm like, oh, I only have 100k. Like, I shouldn't be asking for too much because, like, you look at other people with like so many more, and you're like, oh, maybe I should just be asking for this much. But it's like, I always try to reach a little bit higher. Like, maybe you know, I do have like a, what it, what it is. I'm like, okay, I usually go for this, but I'll try for this. And then sometimes they just come back with like so low, and you're like, that's. <laughs> That's not what I, that's not even close to what I said. Um, but I think for pricing, like I do for TikToks and Instagram p- posts, those are the, my most expensive. And then stories are like, you know, in each individual one is a different pricing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is just like, it, it not even, it's also just like hard to get the money because it's so many financial back and forth, like invoices, this, and then you come back and how they give it to you. So that's what's tough about it. But um I think just not as you've like learned, like don't sell yourself short on things because there's worth in even if you only have 5,000 followers, you know? A hundred percent. Cause one thing I learned that my agents constantly have to remind me is that followers is great, but it's all about engagement. So you could have a hundred K followers, but if you're only getting 2% engagement off of those followers, that's not beneficial to any company. Or you could have, 8,000 or you can have 3,000 followers and have 90% engagement. The company is going to pick the the person with the most engagement, not the person with the most followers, which is something that I've learned. So that has made me want to keep making more authentic content to keep bringing in authentic engagement. Because, you know, I'm sure you get tons and tons of DMs about, hey, let me pay this much so I can get you this many followers. And I'm like, I'm never, ever, ever going to do that. If I was a millionaire, I still wouldn't do that. I never would never <laughs> trust that ever in my life. Like, yeah. yes. One thing, one thing that you talk, one thing, my question is, how long did it take for you to graduate from just taking free product to starting to ask for compensation? I'm gonna be honest. I never went through that free pot product phase. Mm-hmm. I never did that. Um, I just think I wasn't really on top of it. I didn't really have an agent at that time who would get me free project. And I just never fa- found the benefit of an agent, I guess, with such a small following that I had. I first wanted to make it bigger. Um, so I didn't, I've never had, a, never done the free product thing. So I just kind of made the automatic because I blew up. It's a short time. It's just a, such an automatic jump to, all right, yeah. I'm charging now. And that's nice. That's I mean, nice. definitely nice because I didn't have to go through the free product stuff because some of that can be just so annoying. It's like, oh, we'll give you this and then just post picture. And it's like, well, at some point, I'd rather not have my 50th protein bar, but I'd actually yeah. like to get some money from it, you know? Yeah. But it um, it is time consuming and like... you Do you like network with people? Like, too? Like, do you go to brands yourself? 100%. Because like... As you said, I'm not going to sell myself short. The worst thing that you can tell me is no. And I've heard no a million times, so it'll be okay. And at least I'll be in your brain so that so that if something does come up in the future, you think of me, the girl who's blowing up your deal, yeah. you know? So I I have no issues. I'm reaching out to... There's nobody there? I have no issues reaching out to companies that I'm really interested in because you got to start somewhere. So what about you? I, I definitely do. I think I like at that point, it's just like you're going to be your biggest supporter and your biggest um, fan. So like, just go out and do it yourself. Like, you know, you know what your worth is too. Yeah. And I've had a lot of conversations with people about social media and making sure they tap into that. And I get some good and some bad reactions to it of, um, oh, social media is not for me. I don't have time for it. I don't feel like doing this or that. And I'm like, you do not understand the benefits and how easy it can be to make money to get rid of all the debt you have like you have no clue like it'll take maybe an hour of your day and will it possibly suck some days yes but the benefits hugely outweigh the cons what would you say are the pros and cons of social media I mean, the pros is like the cars financial benefit. Like we're exposing the world to our sport through it. <laughs> Cons is just how time consuming it is. Like I'm on TikTok constantly to find new trends and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And that it is like, it is interesting that people can make such assumptions off of you of what they see and they not know. It's like a, such a, a surface view of you instead of being actually who you really are. 
Yeah. And I think um, for me, I can add some. Um, uh, another one of the benefits of social media is the networking that you get. So when you work with certain com- companies, sometimes you work close to certain people in those companies and you can build a relationship. And that can be very, very, very beneficial for you. Um in the long run. So I think networking is a great benefit benefit to social media. One of the um, other benefits is the reach and inspiration you can have on people being your authentic self, because we know in social media, a lot of people fake it sometimes. And so people love to see people not faking it. So that's another benefit. One of the cons that you didn't speak on is like the distraction that it can create. I know for me, like, I'll get into this mode where I'm like, I got to be on my phone. I have to post this at this time. And it's like, just chill. Like you don't have to like, and, and it is a distraction. It, I, yesterday I was on my phone for three hours and it's like, why, why were you on your phone for three hours? There's a lot that you could have been doing in that, that time. Why are we on social media for that long? So um, social media definitely has its pros and cons, but I will tell you guys that the pros definitely outweigh the cons. And if you're not tapped into social media, you definitely should be. And which is totally our team. Like our team, I think they want to, but they're just not prepared to put in the work or see, cause they haven't seen the benefit right now, but there is so much benefit to it. Mm-hmm. I have to hop off, but Naya is going to continue this. Uh, Naya, do us proud, man. I will. Low, have Bye. a good time. Enjoy 15. Okay, guys. So one of the last topics we have before we go into cup questions is just any tips that we that we would give you guys about social media. Um, I'm just going to give you one tip from myself and maybe on the next episode, Lo could have a little um, insider to add for her tip. Um, my tip for social media would be to 100 percent take advantage of it. As Lo said, you can have 100,000 followers or you can have 5,000 followers or you can have 50 followers. It doesn't matter. Take advantage of social media because it can really benefit you in so many ways. Like so many people have created a business off of social media and have been able to financially support every single person in their family. Like who doesn't want to be able to do that? So my tip to you is to take advantage of social media if you are not doing so right now. And if you have questions about that, how to start that process, please feel free to reach out to me and I will definitely answer your questions. Now, the last segment we have on here is cub questions. So um, unfortunately, you guys have to hear all my answers to this. I hope that's okay for you. Uh, Lowe's working hard in Colorado um, for 15. So let's start with our first question. Our first question is, how do you handle the pressure to create content and to be in quotations on for the camera, even when you don't feel like it? Um, I think for me, I just have to remind myself of the benefits of it. Um, there are days where I don't feel like going to a photo shoot. There are days where I don't feel like posting or figuring out my captions for the next week. And I just have to remember that it is going to be beneficial for me in the long run, like Lo said, um, especially like going and doing interviews and even filming this podcast. Like it does take time out of your day and some days you're super excited to do it. And some days you're dead and tired from the day and don't feel like doing it at all. But you know that it's inspiring somebody it's benefiting you and it's also benefiting your organization. So just reminding myself um, of that helps me to do what I need to do in order to create the content and be on for the camera. Our next question is, is it just social media? And I think this was a great question. This question, I want to say, I hope this is okay, came from the mental therapist that we talked with on our last episode, Marissa. And I think it's a great like mental question to think about. Is it just social media? Um, I want to say, in my opinion, it is not like so much is encompassed in the social media, not just the financial benefits, but also the reassurance you can get from social media when people like your photos, when people comment on your photos, when people share your photos, that makes you feel good. So it's not only a financial benefit, but it's also a, a mental benefit. It could also be a mental um 
not trigger, but like it could be bad as well because we don't always get love all day, every day. Like you do get some hate comments. You do get some um, negative reactions to the things that you post and the things that you say. So I think it's it all requires a balance and an understanding that you know what you're doing on social media, you know, your intentions, you know, your authenticity. So you just have to remind yourself of that. So you don't get too tied into social media because it can give you false interpretations of people's lives and who they are as human beings. Um, So I would say just to not take it so serious, you know, like as people say on social media, they, People only really show you what they want you to see. You really only see the tip of the iceberg. So never take social media too serious. That's something I try to remind myself um, because you don't know what's real and what's fake. So it is what it is. The next question is, how do you balance your actual life versus your social media? So one of the benefits for me and probably the same for Lo is that we are very often authentic on our social medias and kind of what we show you is who we are. So I feel like for me, it's not really hard because I'm not going back and forth between different personalities or different ways of living. What I show you is how I live and who I am. So it doesn't feel like a challenge to go, quote unquote, back and forth. Um, I would say like it is, as we said earlier, a very time management and organizational um thing that we have to deal with. So I think in terms of balance, I just try to make sure that my work is put first, rugby is put first, because that is my first priority. That is my job. And then if I have time for the social media that day or that week, I make time for it as much as I can, at least an hour a day or at least a couple hours a week just to make sure that I can get the content out to you guys that you guys love so dearly. Um But yeah, I think it all comes down to time management, making sure I put time for myself to just watch TV or talk on the phone or do a facial. Um, So that's my biggest thing in terms of how I balance both of those is time management. Um, The next question we have is for Lo, and it says, how does Lo feel as she was gaining followers at the Olympics and how was that spotlight? Obviously this question is for Lo and she's not here right now, but I will make sure to include this in the next episode we have on season two so that you can get your answer for this question. The next question is how do you balance the love with the hate? Um, So I kind of touched on this a little earlier in one of the previous questions, but social media is not always love. I've had horrible comments, horrible DMs and me personally, um, gratefully having a very strong mind and knowing whom I am as a person and being confident in that. I just really honestly laugh those things off. Like I want to say, I don't want to say, but like some people have a harder time with dealing with those comments and also have more volumes of hate coming in than I do. I try not to touch on certain subjects as Lo said that I know could be political or far left or far right, because, you know, I have my opinion and I'm okay with that. And other people have their opinion and I'm okay with that as well. So With me, I just try to focus on all the love and any hate that I ever get in my DMs or comments is getting deleted and like not even a second thought for me. So and I know that process is not the same for everybody and that everybody handles it different. And that's completely okay. But as for the question, that is how I handle that situation. And the last question on here, a very interesting question is, do you ever lie on social media? I know a lot of people talk about how people post post products that they never use, how they um, promote movements that they don't really support, how they post this lavish lifestyle that they may not be living. I will tell you from thinking on it, um, I have posted a product that I haven't used consistently, but I've never posted a product that I haven't tried at least once. So there are things where it's like, 
you know, are you going to do this for money, even though it's not something that you really use for me personally? No, like I've had a lot of people reach out to me and say, hey, can you do this CBD product for this amount? And can you do this or that for this? And I'm like, you know, this doesn't really go with who I am as a person. It doesn't really make sense because knowing that I'm a USA athlete and USADA will get my butt, like we can't even really use CBD products. So it's like, I try not to let the money sway me into doing things that aren't authentic with who I am. Also, it's very hard to put out content about products that you don't use because people can tell, um, people can tell like people aren't stupid. Like they know if you actually use a product or not. So for me, I've never blatantly lied about anything on social media that would take a lot of work and time that I already don't have. So the answer to that is no. So we are wrapping up the social media topic for this episode three on season two. My challenge for you guys, we challenge you to shout out your brand. If you have one or your friend's brand on your story supporting yourself and supporting your friends with whatever business they may be starting up or whatever picture that they just posted that they think looks bomb. You don't know how much they will appreciate that. So I challenge you guys to do that today. I'm going to do that today as well for my t-shirt. So tune into my story for that. And also I guess since I'm challenging you guys to do one of your friends' brands, I'm going to do one of my friends' or my sister's brands because my sisters are building great businesses right now. I'm super proud of them for taking advantage of social media, and I hope I've been a great influence on them and able to help them through that process. All right, guys, make sure you subscribe to the Leo's Den on your podcast app. Show notes are on our webpage at wissports.com at the Listen tab at Leo's Den. And also make sure you follow at with sports on all social media platforms for more great products on women's sport. Thanks everybody so much for tuning in. Make sure to check us out on Instagram at Leo's den underscore with sports and to keep tuning in whether you came for the rugby and stayed for the shenanigans. We hope you join us next time in the Leo's den. Peace out. <laughs>